Good morning. I'm Bubba from Bubba's Tango 18. So I received quite a lot of comments and it seemed like there was a lot of discussion on the breast hook in regards to creating the reveal or the recess for the cleat and how it's going to be drained. Uh, it's not going to work. There's going to be, you're, you're going to chafe your lines. This is just a skiff. It's not a, it's not a 40 footer that's going to tied up to a dock and moving up and down with the tide two times a day and be a result of, of that chafing. So it's just gonna be a day boat. You know, it's, it's gonna be live its life on a trailer. So I'm thinking about changing gears. So we've got a lot of comments about what's going up on the bow, what, what the uh, up on the breast hook, the reveal that I created, the recess, uh, what I envisioned and why uh, I was doing what I was doing, why there were, <laughs> how I was gonna drain it. I think it looks neat, but you know, is it going to hold a lot of water? I talked about how I was going to uh, chamfer a uh, or route, so there wasn't an edge on there, and having lines to chafe. This is a a day boat. It's going to be tied up maybe to a dock, you know, once in a while, take it out, you know, fish, whatever the case. I don't really think that's a you know, it could be a valid concern. It's a definitely a valid concern, but I don't think it's necessarily an issue for this boat. Uh, this being a skiff, living its entire life on a trailer. But I'm going to address. That. I'm going to address that in the sense that I'm going to build it both ways. I'm going to show my idea, but I'm also thinking of creating a raised cleat on top of this area uh, using the new wood that we purchased uh, from the Exotic Woods Company. So there's a, there's a couple of different uh, avenues here. We're going to do a little video segment on both avenues and, uh, and see, what we, see what we like better. A lot of times, uh, as with other uh, uh, channels, uh, the internet is correct. You know, we, have, we pull all these ideas that everybody uh, provides to us and a lot of times that they work for the better. You know, I have gr some great ideas and, and visions of, of grandeur, but you know, maybe they always don't work. But I want to, I want people to school me. I want to bounce ideas off, and uh, and a lot of things uh, people have said, and I've taken to heart and changed up. That's what we're going to work on this episode. So thanks for liking, watching, and subscribe. Thanks a lot. So what we're doing here is, I talked about doing a two-way. So there's the original way with the recessed uh, panel, which I have out there, laid out there. And the other way is I'm going to take some of that new exotic wood that we just bought. I'm going to, I've cut it to, uh, to length. I'm going to glue it all together, uh, like we're making a cutting board. And uh, we're gonna glue it all together. And then I'm going to um, put that on another piece of, uh, of ply. Uh, cut it out all out to shape. Uh, I'm just going to hot glue it uh, on the on the bottom layer, and then use that edge for my uh, quarter inch rounding over bit, and uh, and make a nice radius all the way around this piece. And then we'll uh, we'll choose. So I'll I'll do it both ways, and uh, and see which way looks better. Uh, 
what creates a, a, a better look, a better uh, architectural reveal, um, and uh, go from there. Okay, let's get back to it. Alright, so before I came out, I took the panel that we have that we need to polish and ultimately use or not use and I traced out placement of this piece and now I'm going to use that as a template to line up all these pieces so we have coverage and then we can make a template from a template. So, African mahogany and hard maple. That will be my uh, accent piece. Learn how to count. First step. Right now I'm just deciding how what what looks best. Do I need I want. What do you think about that? I don't know. All right. There we go. Something nice and flat. So as you can see, we've got our design design laid out. Uh, I've got my pieces. I've got a brush. Not really the best brush to use, but it is the brush that I have. Um, I'd like a flux brush. I thought about using epoxy, but instead I'm going to use the venerable Tight Bond 2 water resistant. The thought process of doing this like an hour ago. I was gonna be busy working on on uh, sanding the transom and uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do something else. Half of this for right now or maybe just pieces and parts, I don't know. See how it goes. Oh, UPS is here. What's going on? The busiest man in the world. I hear you. All right, brother. You too. Five. All right, let's 
just do it all since we got a system. Take that inside the house, put it back in the shop, and uh, let it uh, harden up. But I'm using this to create the template for this. I'm going to actually use this piece. I'm going to take it inside, place it underneath of the area I've already cut out, trace this out, cut it out hot glue it to the bottom of this piece and then use it for a template and also use it to, um, to, to trace this out and then when it's glued together then I can take my uh, router and then use the edge of this let the roller ride on it to, to uh, chamfer or round over the, uh, this piece so that's my idea that's what I'm going for That'll be in a couple more episodes. We're gonna let this dry, and we're gonna go for uh, phase uh, part B. Part B of the, uh, it's either gonna be an inlay, or what's the opposite of an inlay? I don't know. An on top outer lay, I don't know. So, all right, that's it.